Yeah, the delivery service knocked the third time today. And are you also one of these online shopaholics or a business owner who gains hundreds of these parcels per week in the storage room or basement? Because that's exactly what happens to me every week. One week of parcels, but let me tell you, you can dig gold out of these boxes. And I don't mean the goods you have ordered. There's much more inside. And what you should look for is exactly this material, foam core or packaging foam. So let's take it and I'll show you a cool trick how you can save lots of money. At first, take a drawer of your choice on your workbench or desk, open it and empty all the clutter inside. And then remove the drawer and flip it upside down. And then take the best measuring device you can find and do some measurements. And now search for one of these bigger cardboard boxes. And next rip the box into pieces. Take a sharpie and mark the size of the drawer on the cardboard. That's a mat I used before. It has exactly the size of the drawer, so I use it as a stencil. Take a pair of scissors and cut the cardboard to size. Take all the clutter you like to hide in the drawer and place it on the cardboard. And next, trace the outlines of all the things you like to hide in the drawer with the sharpie. And when you're done with tracing, you created an artwork which you can put on the wall. <laughs> no joke. But you can put it on the wall if you like to take a picture because that's what we need for the next step. Grab your phone or camera, 50mm lens or portrait lens is best and take a picture of the tracing. Yeah, let's put the picture into a computer and let's use a graphic software. And you can use every graphic software you like because we have to do only basic work. It's super simple. I decided to go with Adobe Illustrator, so let's check it out. And yeah, I opened a new file in nearly the size of the drawer. The first thing I did was I drew a red rectangle in exactly the shape of the drawer. That's very important. Now I can import the picture I did and I scaled it exactly to the size of the rectangle. Check this out, check the corners. That's what I did. And at next, we can grab a pen tool in the graphic software of your choice. Super simple, just grab a pen and trace again all the black outlines you did with the Sharpie. Yeah, I'm done with the tracing. It was super simple because these are only basic shapes. And what I can do now is I can remove the picture. I don't need it anymore. And as you can see, I have two parts of the graphic, a line in between these two parts in the lower third. And the reason is the laser I like to use is not big enough to cut this sheet in one piece. It has only 30 centimeter of height, so I have to do a cut. And I arrange these two parts in different files. One for the top section you can see here and one for the bottom section. Now it's time to send them to the laser and to check it out. Yeah, and that's the tool I like to use. It's the X-Tool P2, a 55 watt CO2 laser. That's like scissors and steroids. And that's the box where the magic happens. Long story short, that's the laser head, but the laser tube itself is behind this metal cover. It's a glass CO2 tube and the laser will be reflected against three mirrors, one behind the cover, one you can see here and one is inside the laser head. 
but the really cool thing about the machine is it comes with two cameras one camera here for the overall view and one camera direct on the laser head to measure the distance between the laser bed and the material super cool and that makes it super easy to work with the machine and to arrange things but not so much talk and let me show you how to work with the laser here i have a piece of foam core and as you can see there's a hole also a small cutout, but that's no problem. Let's put it in the laser and the cameras can do the measurement. And if you have an X-Tool laser, you can use the X-Tool Creative Space to control your laser. It's a super cool software, easy to use. Let's check it out. That's the X-Tool Creative Space and what you can see here is the inside of the laser. And we can click refresh. And now you can see the material I've put in the laser. And at next, I insert my file, so I click on image. And then I can input the file, and as you can see, it still pass. At next, I have to measure the thickness of the material, so I click on this icon, and I'm searching a place where I can find the material. So let's click on the material and the laser checks thickness. And now I click Ctrl A to mark every shape I like to cut. And I have a new menu on the right side where I can set the power settings and the speed settings. And I do 60% of power and 40 millimeter per second of speed. And now I can click on process. I get again a preview of the things I like to cut and I can click on start. And here it is, the free shadow foam. The only thing left to do is to grab some spray adhesive and to glue all the parts together. Yeah, and that's it. That's how you can have shadow foam for free. Just give the packaging material a second life. That reduces a lot of waste. The only thing left to do for me is to put all the things back in the drawer, but not in a mess like last time. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.